and I bow to the Buddhaness, the good heart, the warm hearted one, noble minded one in your seat. Don't overlook her. <clears throat> so, to begin with a little experiential experience of our own innate good heart, warm heart, and awakenedness that is the future, really, if a future is to be possible of this endangered planet and endangered civilization, even. I'd like to chant an ancient yet timeless Tibetan Buddhist prayer and invocation, a blessing, and a call to awakefulness and to connection, to awakening together, which is my subject this morning, awakening the good heart together and the diamond rule, seeing the light, the Buddhaness, the divine and everyone and everything, the diamond rule. So please make yourself comfortable. We'll have a moment of contemplative sweetness, a few moments of mindfulness, a very short, instant American meditation, one minute meditation. So meditate as fast as you can. <laughs> <clears throat> Hung Wajan Yuljin Chan Sam Pemagas Adamba La Yatsin Chugging Drun Ye Pemajan Sudra Kudu Kandra Mamba Kur Kiki J Sudatra Shingi la chi shi su so ngudu pe ma si di hu O ma hu ben za gudu pe ma si di hu O ma hu ben za gudu pe ma si di hu May the Buddha's blessings ever awaken and illumine our good minds. May the enlightened, bless, enlightened one's blessing and inspiration ever unfold in our noble hearts. May the inconceivable blessing of awakefulness itself, enlightenment itself, dispel the momentary illusion we've ever been separate, alone, incomplete, or apart. Again, homage to the Buddhaness in your seat. Don't overlook her. Ah. Take a deep breath, please, inhaling deeply, filling up, feeling it viscerally, somatically in your lower belly, and exhaling and releasing. <sighs> Again, inhaling deeply, feeling it in your lower belly, your hari, your navel chakra, somatically, and exhaling and releasing, relaxing, letting go, letting be. That's the secret. And third, the last time, inhaling deeply and filling up, feeling it, energizing, harmonizing, somaticizing, and exhaling and releasing. Ah. And one more last time, I lied to you. Inhaling deeply, filling up, feeling it, centering, concentrating, focusing, ABC, attention, balance, concentration and releasing, ah, and letting everything go, fully inhabiting the here and now and imbibing its nutritious healing essences. If you're not here now, you won't be there then, I can assure you. Nowness awareness is the true Buddha within. Just presencing not even trying to meditate through the three principles of nowness meditation, nowness awareness, natural body, just sitting, natural breath and energy, just breathing. And third, natural heart, mind, just being, just sitting, just breathing and aware of it and just being present and awakeful, attentive. Pay attention, it pays off, ABC, attention, balance, concentration. This breath is as if the only breath, simply mindful of it and letting go of everything past and future. This moment as if the only moment.
sitting Buddha as is on the spot, awareness transparent to itself. I can see some of you struggling, so don't meditate, just smile. Look as enlightened and happy as you can. Appearances are all. A smile heals the distance between us and ourselves, the distance between self and other, instills that marvelous re resonance, healing resonance, positive resonance we just heard about. Just smiling, just sitting, just being. Letting go means letting come and go, letting be. That's the secret, as is Imaho. Wondrous natural meditation. Just breathing, just smiling, just being present and relaxed. Breathe, smile, and relax. Three steps to nowness awareness, to being totally here now, to inner peace and harmony. Breathe, smile, relax for a micro moment. Breathe, smile, relax, center, focus. Simple steps to a sacred pause or a moment of mindfulness amidst any part of a busy day. One minute instant meditation. Mo moments of mindfulness. Take a breath break. It pays off. Now cultivating the warm heart, awakening the warm heart of loving kindness and self-compassion, wishing, affirming to yourself, may I be happy, content, fulfilled. Say it to yourself, please, may I be happy, content, fulfilled in your mind. Say it in your heart, mind, may I be happy, content, fulfilled. May I be awakened, liberated, and free. Smile a little. Suffuse every cell in your body with these delectable, subtle essences of metta, maitri, loving kindness, friendliness, self-compassion. So healing and holifying. The Buddha's own loving kindness meditation. May I be happy, content, free, and enjoy ease and well-being. May I be awakened, liberated, and free. Please join together in this co-meditation, shared spirituality, awakening the warm heart together. May I love well and let love in. Please say it to yourself. May I love well and let love in. Make every connection meaningful, every moment meaningful, with positive resonance, openness, friendliness, befriending myself, befriending all. May I love well and let love in, breathing it out and breathing it in. Love is a verb. Love comes from loving, breathing it out. Breathing it in to the heart center, to your whole being. Filling up with love, soaking in it, healing through love, complete in love. Healing and holifying. Serene, harmonizing, shanti, peace. Loving ourselves, loving all, wishing, praying, affirming. May all beings be happy, content, and peaceful. 
please say it to yourself. May all beings be happy, content, and peaceful. May all be liberated, healed, and free. May all be happy, content, and peaceful, beginning with our loved ones and reaching outwards in concentric circles of loving. May all be liberated, at peace, and free. Breathing it out, breathing it in, receiving it from all beings who are like a circle around us, especially your loved ones, your benefactors, your grandparents and parents and loved ones and best friends and mates, your teachers and gurus, saints and sages, Buddhas and bodhisattvas, breathing it in from them all around us, the invisible array, and breathing it out. May all be awakened, liberated, and free. Grow and glow in every way. And may we all together complete the spiritual journey. For a better future, which is now, to be possible. Jang Cho Sam Cho Krim Po Cho Mak Ye Pa Na Ki Gyo Cho Ye Pa Niang Pa Me Pa Ya Kan Ne Kan Du Pel Wa Sho May the lamp of enlightenment be ignited and blaze up where it has not yet arisen and where it has arisen, may it be fanned into flame by our sterling actions and inspirations here, aspirations and inspiration here. May it illumine the entire universe. And may all beings come together, awaken. <clears throat> A few years ago, the Dalai Lama, who's one of my mentors, when I introduced him at a big gathering at my alma mater, the University of New York at Buffalo, where I was back in the 60s. Oh, I shouldn't say that. You'll know how old I am. He said to me, uh, you know, just praying and meditating is very good and important these days, but we also have to take positive social action. And I hope you'll take it to the young people and bring secular ethics, contemplative education, so on to campuses, et cetera. And he said, and he said this in public too, we need to be 21st century Buddhists, open to tech, using technology and learning modern science and tolerant of all the world religions and non-sectarian. And I think that's a very important message. Anyway, I took it to heart and I made a vow then to become the bodhisattva of children, the Buddha to be, the spiritual elder, the edifier and awakener, the uplifter of all the children and younger spirits among us, some of whom may be older than myself, which is pretty old. But we all have the little Buddha with that innocent inner child at heart, underneath it all, underneath our defense mechanisms and all the scars from the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, the difficulties of our lives, as Shakespeare called it. The inner Buddha, little Buddha, is always there, beyond Buddhist Buddha or Asian Buddha or male Buddha. Our best self, our true nature, our good heart, our warm heart, as the Dalai Lama likes to call it, and other, other teachers. In their Tibetan minds, translating the words Tathagata Garba, Buddha nature, Buddhaness, but in English, good heart, warm heart, noble heart, mind, not just mental, heart, mind, and soul, energy, spirit, chitta, bodhicitta, awakened, illumined heart, mind. We all have that. Like, when I, I remember when I was four or five years old, some of my first memories were, I have a younger sister and a younger brother. I grew up in New York, in Long Island, New York. I'm Jewish on my parents' side, in case you're wondering but Buddhist by choice and inclination. 
And when my youngest sister got hurt and was crying, I cried too. I was four or five. I mean, this was before I was taught that men don't cry. A terrific lesson, not. <laughs> and I haven't cried much since, except in movies where no one can see me. But when my sister cried, I cried. I was so identified with her. We were so instinctively, mutually interwoven, interpenetrating, interbeing, connected. That's the warm heart of empathy, of caring. Then you naturally treat others as you would be treated, as Buddha said. Maybe that was Jesus. I get them confused. <laughs> when I see myself in you and you in me, who would I harm? Who would I exploit? So what happened to that warm-hearted, good-hearted, fairly selfless young boy who cried because his little sister cried and wanted to protect her? who became so individualistic and competitive in sports and other things. And yet that innate Buddhist, bodhicitta, we call it in, in Buddhism, the, our true nature, our best self. Abraham Lincoln called it the uh, higher angels of our best nature. What's happened to that? It's there. How do we awaken that? How do we awaken to it? How do we fan that, those embers or that little light into flame? That's the subject today. That's the subject of spiritual life, actually. But we're taking that up today in the context of this warm uh, hearts, clear minds, bright future conference. There's an old Zen saying, Zen is the Buddhism of Japan, eyes like ice, heart of fire. That's the balance. Not being an icy, frozen ice cube, stoic, stone Buddha, no, being a living Buddha, heart of fire, passionate, like the poet Rumi. Passionate, lo loving, dancing with life, and yet heart, eyes clear, centered, aware, equanimous, detached. Spiritual detachment, friends, does not, is not synonymous with complacence and indifference. It's a very caring objectivity that can help us a lot in life. So warm heart, noble heart, and yet clear vision, that's where the contemplative arts and sciences, meditation and yoga, prayer, mindfulness training, attitude transformation, and so on, come in very handy. As we heard from Lisa, the Olympic swimmer, she slipped at the beginning of the big race. And her, was it her coach or her mother said, uh, oh, you lost your concentration. Concentration is so helpful in the worldly way for performance, for not having accidents on the road. There are no accidents. Every accident has a cause. But they're called accidents. They should be called crashes, perhaps. Inattention is one of the biggest causes. Mindlessness, the opposite of mindfulness. What's the virtue in mindlessness? Name one. But mindfulness has so many virtues and opportunities in the worldly way, as well as in the spiritual field, in the way of wholeness and completeness and true connection. So that's how we awaken the clear vision and the passionate heart, the good heart that empathizes with others. Empathy, feeling with other. Empathy is the root of compassion and altruism of wishing to help others. If I feel your pain, I feel moved to help instinctively if I'm not totally occluded or obscured by my own um, cocoon, my own barriers, my own defense mechanisms, like with my little sister. There was a, a story in the news a few years ago. A boy aged 10 in New York was asked to give a blood transfusion for his, his sister, who was dying of one of the uh, tremendous troubles with the blood disease and, and needed a big transfusion. And he was one of the few people that had the same blood type as her. And his parents talked to him and the doctors and psychologists, I guess, talked to him. And then he gave it. And after they took, he was lying on the table and he came out and they, after they took the, a lot of blood out of him, he said, is she going to be all right? And everybody said, yes. And he said, when am I going to die? He thought he was going to die. And his parents cried. He thought he was going to die and he was willing to do it. Because that was what was needed and what was asked. What happened to that? compassionate altruist, that unselfish lover of life and of all those we care about. That is underneath us 
to all. So in this loving kindness and compassion kind of meditation training, bhavana, metta bhavana, cultivating loving kindness and compassion, self-compassion, other compassion, we learn to love ourselves enough to breach, uh, um, a bridge the gap between self and other, to equalize self and other, so we can treat others as we ourselves would be treated. Or even better, treat others as we would have our beloved children be treated, since we treat ourselves like crap so much of the time. And we learn to have compassion for those who suffer and feel what they feel and realize we're all in the same boat. We all rise and fall, sink and swim together. That's the theme here of awakening together, co-meditation, shared spirituality, spirituality for couples, for pairs, not just couples, for whoever you meet, human, abnormal, or vegetable. And I know some vegetables. Some of them meditate too much. They become like wooden Buddhas. But how can we become living Buddhas? Not mere Buddhists, but real Buddhas. Whole and complete. That's the question I want to raise here for this conference. And on Saturday, at my workshop, I'm going to talk more about this and go more into it. And how it's very important for us today to do this together in our shrinking, interdependent world. We cannot do it alone. The Tibetans say only the snow leopard can go off alone. The rest of us need to each other. The virtues of beloved community, as Martin Luther King called it, Sangha in Buddhism, satsang. Like Jesus said, when two or more of you are gathered together, there am I. That's very important for us today, I think, so that we can pass on to the children the good lessons of emotional intelligence, not just intellectual intelligence, IQ, but EQ, and spiritual existential intelligence, some spiritual literacy about the big questions of life and how to find your own answers to life's essential mysteries. I have a book of that title, The Big Questions, and so on. And how we can bring this attention, balance, clarity, or centeredness, and I'll add compassion, the three C's, into our lives for a better world and a better future to be possible. And the future is now, friends. We're struggling to change incrementally, and as we get older, it's harder to change, isn't it? But the world is changing exponentially. It behooves us to catch up a little bit and to let go of our excess baggage. Everybody says they want to get out of their ruts, but who's ready, willing, and able to get out? and leave that cozy, smelly nest behind and really change? Who's ready to face the unknown? Who's willing to go through the troubles and disappointments? And who's able and knows how to do so? That's a challenge for us today. Who's ready, willing, and able to change and become the changes we wish to see in the world, as Mahatma Gandhi said. So I mentioned the diamond rule, seeing the light, the divine, the love in everyone and everything. I think this is a great practice for us today. In Tibetan, we call it pure perceptions or sacred outlook, sacramental vision, seeing this world like an altar and all like gods and goddesses, Buddhas and bodhisattvas on it, and retraining ourselves, lo jung, mind training, attitude transformation, spiritual refinement, equalizing ourselves with others, Getting so calm and clear that we can feel what others feel, just like we more or less feel or know what our children are thinking or when they're lying or what they need, even when they don't. So we can all be like the bodhisattvas of children and lift all together up in our robe, our cloak, our arms, join heads and hands, hearts and minds together. Education is the silver bullet, friends. And today we have higher education, but it's like, Vocation, we have vocational training. We need to think about wisdom for life education, wisdom education, and take learning and reflection and integration and application of life and really make it part of ourselves through learning, integration, uh, reflection and analysis, application, integration with life and making it part of ourselves so that a better world can be possible and become less consumers and more producers and distributors to others, and really be the compassionate bodhisattvas, Buddhas to be, spiritual elders and leaders, enlightened leaders and mentors that this world needs, and back the young people, empower them, back them, be there for them, and get out of their way. Thank you very much. <laughs>